It has so far proved an impossible task to pin down the exact origin of the famous Fern Gully. In 1981, an eight-man technical committee advising the relevant minister on rehabilitating Fern Gully gave him a brief history of it, as far as they were able, but informed the minister that its origin was either obscure or lost. None of the early maps of Jamaica in the 18th and 19th centuries that I've looked at give any indication of Fern Gully, nor in almost all cases of a road following such a route. The map on screen comes from a tourist map of the island of Jamaica, published around 1900, in a pamphlet entitled The Happy Month in Jamaica, which was produced by the United Food Company to attract tourists to the island. This is the first map I have found which names Fern Gully and shows the road through it. The map was intended especially for a cyclist, who would certainly have appreciated the information on roads and on gradients which the map included. Possibly, Fern Gully started out with an underground river flowing through caves, the roofs of which later collapsed. Some have suggested that it was created in the 1760s by a flash flood, but do not seem to indicate the source of this information. Edward Long, in his History of Jamaica, 1774, wrote, Near Ocherias, or as it is now more commonly called, Cherias Bay, in this parish, the road from St. Mary passes through Walter's plantation to the westward up a steep hill. This road have been gullied very much about 11 years ago, by a heavy fall of rain in October. The skeleton of an Indian was laid bare to view, about 5 feet below the surface. End quote. But this does not seem to refer to Fern Gully, rather to the road eastwards into St. Mary. However, in 1785, it is said that the House of Assembly authorized expenditure on altering and completing the road from Monique to Ocherius Bay, and that in 1800, the Journal of the Assembly referred to that road passing through the gully. It is also suggested that Fern Gully was at first called Ocherius Gully, but I have not so far found that name being used. So if anyone can show some light on that claim, please, I'd really appreciate it. However, I have recently discovered references to it as the Gully Road, so I'm gonna include some of that here. So far, the earliest usage that I've found of the name the Gully Road is in the 29 years in the West Indies and Central Africa, a review of missionary work and adventure, 1829 to 1858 by the Reverend Hope Master Tan Waddell, a famous Presbyterian missionary in Jamaica and especially West Africa. In an account of his travels in the island in 1837-38, he wrote, At Ocherias, I turned towards the interior of a road which I was told would go to Goshen, where our brother Mr. Jameson lately arrived and settled. It was called the Gully Road and was a strange and ancient looking way but whether a work of art and natural formation could not be known. Its name partly describes its character. It led inwards between ranges of forest-clad hills and was walled on both sides by continuous lines of moss-grown rock mantled with creepers like old ivy-clad mason work. No stream flowed there, nor was the way encumbered with loose rocks and masses of debris and heaps of sand like an old watercourse. The surface seemed of smooth solid rock. It was a piece of antiquity, as if it had been made or discovered by the Spaniards and then forgotten. Neither man nor beast appeared for miles, nor watchman's hut, nor provision ground, nor any sign of human labor on stone or tree. Fine timbers grew untouched or lay rotten where they fell. All was old and grey, silent and solitary. After plodding mile after mile through that gloomy and lonely avenue without seeing a living thing, our means of outlet I began to be anxious for some escape from the defile before night. At length, the way brightened, the hills opened, the summit was reached. Human habitations were discovered and by various true unusual paths, I gained my destination. I had been misguided in taking that way. The right one called Barcadia Road led from Frankfurt Wharf, where I had spent the night with the watchman two years before, up the sides of the mountains and through the magnificent scenery of the White River with which I had the pleasure at a later period of making a delightful acquaintance." End quote. It is clear from this excerpt that the name Gully Road was well established, but also that ferns were not apparently particularly notable in its vegetation. At least the writer did not mention seeing them in the gloomy and lonely avenue. The Reverend Mr. Waddell 
seemed in fact somewhat put out that he had been misdirected to this unattractive route rather than the more magnificent scenery of the White River, which would have taken him directly to Goshen. It would be good to find some earlier references to the Gully Road, which was certainly not noted by Lady Nugent in March 1802 when she passed through Sentan, by the coast road which she described as frightful, so narrow and rocky, and the precipices dreadful. Who else described the Gully Road in the first four decades of the 19th century? It also seems that the planting of ferns along the Gully Road, if it was ever done deliberately, must have happened in the three decades between Waddell's time and the early 1870s, when it was the ferniest gully one visitor had ever seen. We'll get to that. Just recently, while tracking down another topic in 19th century Jamaica, I came across a reference to Moncrief Gully in an account written by an anonymous visitor to Jamaica, presumably around 1860. The gully described from location and physical character seemed to be what was later named Fern Gully. So far, the only other use of this name that I have found is in a volume of the Manual of Conchology, Study of Mollusk Shells, that's in 1904 on page 10, about a shell found in Jamaica, Moncrief Gully, Parish of St. Anne. It will be interesting to find out if anyone has references to the gully under this name. Here from the Dublin News University magazine, June 1861, the column Seen and Customs in the West Indies, Jamaica. Descending the northern face of Mount Diablo, we soon entered a district, the scenery of which again was quite unlike what we had ever expected to see. We entered a wonderful volcanic fissure of ravine extending for two miles northwards called Moncrief Gully. Though the sun was still powerful, its influence did not penetrate those deep shades. The gully is just wide enough to allow two carriages to pass while the rocks on either side tower abruptly to the height in some places of about 300 feet, but so dense is the foliage that it is only occasionally that the rock itself is detected. From every crevice and fissure, and from every base to the summit, trees, large and small, start forth, arch over and interlace their branches, and tower far up into the blue chink of the sky that is visible. They are densely covered with parasitical plants and seem to be corded together with singular vegetable ropes. These, later in their turn, are also bound with convolvuli and spomsies, morning glory, otherwise known, which springing from below, catch the dependent suckers and climb up them, showing out at every leafy articulation a red, white, yellow, blue or purple blossom. Occasionally, a fallen tree with its load of parasites stay like ropes, bridges the ravine, and a stray slanting beam broke through some slight opening. The effect was enchanting." End quote. It is interesting that the word friend occurs only once, perhaps relating the description more to the Reverend Hope Waddell's grimmer account than to Marian North's furniest gully. By the time Marian North traveled this route in 1871 and 72, it had become the very furniest gully. Marian Nart was one of many artists who have visited Jamaica over the centuries. During her visit in 1871 and 72, she spent some time on the north coast and wrote of traveling back to the south through St. Anne, ascending some of the very ferniest gully she ever saw. This surely must have been what later became famous as Fern Gully, already well planted with ferns in the early 1870s, but not that date identified by the name it later acquired. The painting on screen seems to be of the fern walk in the mountains near Newcastle, but it does illustrate the type of vegetation she was recording. About the same time, Antonio Galenga, a famous Italian writer and a correspondent for the Times of London, visited the island and wrote in the Pearl of the Antilles in 1873 of riding up the famous Gully Road. In 1883, Maria Nard's friend, Lady Brassi, wrote in her journal of her short stay in Jamaica. She wrote in glowing terms of her family's drive through the moonlit gully road. She and her husband and children were on one of the numerous cruises on their ship, the Sunbeam. Certainly from her description, gully road already deserved the Fern Gully title, which it was sure to assume in about 10 years time. Also, in 1883, William C. Bates wrote of his visit to Jamaica in Appalachia, the journal of the Appalachian Mountain Club of Boston. He also described the gully road. The gully road is a weird place, as steep as carriage roads can be, some two miles long and overshadowed by trees and steep banks. The sun may sometimes punctuate it, but not in the afternoon, if even at noonday. 
Dank, moss, and nodding ferns line the banks, and bows meet overhead as semi twilight pervades. Here is the home of the solitaire, strange bird of the forest, seldom seen by man. It's called so mournful that it has been likened to that of a lost soul. End quote. The term Gully Road continued to be accepted name for the road out of Ocherias toward Monique until it seems the promoters of the Monique Hotel decided that the phrase Fern Gully was more appealing in their advertisements, perhaps in part because of the fern craze of the period. There is also the suggestion that Fern Gully was created when it was planted with ferns by George Samuel Genman in the 1870s when he was on the staff of Jamaica's Botanical Gardens. He is also acknowledged as something of an expert on Jamaican ferns. This sounds a reasonable possibility, but no evidence seemed to exist to support it. In an editorial in October 1879, and Genman's last report as superintendent of botanical gardens, the gleaner referred to a new fern house where the scientific culture of this exquisite branch of the floor of Jamaica can receive due consideration and to ferns of which a specimen of a fan species, a native of Jamaica but new to science, had been added to the gardens. However, neither when Genman left for British Guinea at the time, nor at the time of his death in March 1902, is there any mention of Fern Gully. In his introduction to his On the List of the Jamaican Ferns, Genman in fact makes it clear that his work on ferns had been confined to the Blue Mountains, particularly the southern slopes, and urges the need for similar work on the northern slopes. It seems fairly certain that whatever Genman's contribution to the study of Jamaica's ferns, he was not responsible for the wonderful gully. Others also seem to believe that fern gully was planted up in the 1880s, and this certainly seems a reasonable proposition, since as we shall see, the first mentions of fern gully seem to come up in 1890. Michael Burke wrote in the Observer 29th of the 12th, 1905, that fern gully is a dried up riverbed in which a retired army major planted over 500 species of fern in the 1880s. However, I have so far not been able to find any mentions of this project. Whoever carried it out, again, perhaps someone can provide further information on this. While doing a little more research for this video, I came across another claimant to the creation of Ferngully, whom I have not seen mentioned elsewhere. In the account of a meeting in Sentence Bay in 1933 attended by the MLC D. T. O. Wint, as recorded a claim by Charles Nicholas Emming, a land surveyor of Claremont in St. Anne, to have surveyed Foreign Gully for the government and to have planted all the ferns there in 1895. The audience apparently agreed with this claim, but in a letter printed a few days later, another St. Anne resident poo pooed Emming's story. Guys, I'm gonna show you pictures of the letter on screen, alright? I um, really hope there will be other comments on the matter, but so far I've not found any. Emming was indeed a surveyor from 1896 and could possibly have been involved in some program of rehabilitation of the gully, a forerunner of many later. Indeed, a public work support for 1895 and 1896 referred to the improvement of the drainage of the Fern Gully Road. But Fern Gully certainly existed before 1895, referred to, though not by name, by the governor, Sir Henry Blake, in 1890 and constantly mentioned in advertisements for the Monique Hotel. So far now, that is where the search for the beginnings of Fern Gully must stand. It will be great if someone can come up with further information on this topic. Guys, the research is not finished. This is not the official video, but I really did want to share all of this with you guys. If you found this topic interesting and informative, please do let me know in the comment section down below. Remember to give the video a thumbs up and links will be on screen our links will be in the description if you want to support elite jamaica or if you want to help me with my gofundme all right guys y'all stay blessed have a wonderful day Don't forget to drop a like and a comment. Don't forget to subscribe.